Second Chronicles chapter 22 And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Azariah his youngest son king in his stead. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the elders. So Azariah the son of Jerome, king of Judah, reigned. Well, he's the only boy left to reign. The rest of his boys have been killed. Forty and two years old was Azariah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Athua, the daughter of Amri. Now that's an important name to know because she's going to be the, the next ruler of this nation. Uh, daughter, actually is granddaughter. That falls under the, you know, the Bible is wrong so let's throw it out and change it. No, a, a child, a, a son can be a grandson, a, a, a father can be a grandfather. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Amri, you'll find in 1 Kings 16.29 and 2 Kings 8.26 for more information about that. Is this woman's wicked? He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, which is not good, for his mother was the, his counselor to do wickedly. Athaliah uh, guided this boy, guided this kingdom, and was all in wickedness, was all against God, and was all after Ahab and Israel. Remember, Israel is a nation, they're up north, they've always done wrong, they've always gone against God. Judah, you get good kings and you get bad kings. You get revivals in Judah that you don't get in Israel. Wherefore, he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab. Now the thing is, it says in verse 3, his mother was his counselor to do weekly, wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab. He's old enough to make his own decisions. He's not mama's boy no more. When you reach a certain age, you are on your own as far as your parents. You are growing up. No matter what mommy teaches you, or daddy teaches you, you make your own decisions in life, and you can't. You're not going to stand at the judgment seat, either one, and most likely the great white throne, and say, "Well, because my parents did, because my great grandparents did, because my great great grandparents did it." That's not going to fall. You have brains enough to know, especially in America, with all all the churches, all the Bibles, the street preaching, the gospel tracts. Even though they're getting less and less and less. I mean, listen. I was born in 1968. I was saved in 1987. Those years, I've never, ever seen a gospel track. The only Jesus I ever heard about was the Christmas time and the Christmas carols. If I had known somebody personally that came up to me and witnessed to me about the Lord Jesus Christ before 1987, I don't know. If I ever read a gospel track, I don't remember it. But yet, how many Baptist churches, how many Christians that came into my life and didn't do nothing to tell me about Jesus? How many churches are in Daytona Beach, Volusia County, and how many come telling people about Jesus? That's why we go on the streets. That's why we give up gospel tracts. That's why we influence Volusia Mall yesterday while we walked around with gospel tracts because no one else is going to do it. I don't care what kind of junk you tell me. My life lives for Christ and all that. No. I've never seen it. The house that I got saved in, the most of, probably a quarter of my life growing up in Waterford, Right down the road was a, was a Baptist church of great importance of the Baptist history. Had they ever once walked up to Route 85, had they ever come into a White House, talked to a little boy that was sitting there, wandering around, not knowing anything about God, had they ever told me about Jesus? Not that I know of. And come to find out, my, my grandmother grew up in a Baptist church. My grandfather grew up in a Catholic. My grandma grew up in a Baptist church. My grandfather grew up in, a, in a, a Catholic church. The Catholic became the main domination religion. My grandmother, on my other side, 
grew up in a, in a Baptist church and left the church because of stupidity. Of all those people that came into my life who should have told me about Jesus Christ, they didn't. But yet, I had enough sense to know that there was a God. When I was searching as a boy, I, even when I went to the Catholic Church, I didn't believe that nonsense. I, I knew there was a God. And God opened up the scriptures to me because he knew my heart was somehow searching. And I can't say it because it's the religion of my grandparents. No, it's God gave to my heart the God. God gives to people the God. Gives you the revelation. You can't blame anybody else if you choose false religion. You can't blame anybody else for believing a lie. It's your own decision. I mean, he's heard stories of his, of his, his grandfathers in the kingdom. He knew about David. He knew about Abraham. He knew about Jehoshaphat. There's no excuse. Like I said, I grew up, the only thing I knew was Christmas carols and Christmas time and, and Easter. That's why I'm offended when you mention Christmas and Easter with Jesus Christ because it had nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Had I followed those two celebrations, those two times, I would have been going on still with Roman Catholic i I'd never come to the light. Because it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ at all. I don't care if you take a, a, a turtle out of a pond and call him a Ford Pinto. He ain't no Pinto. He ain't no Ford. No matter what you call him. He did evil in the sight of the Lord like the house of Ahab. For they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. He should have took those those counselors. He should have took his mother. Wasn't there a king that said, Mom, you're going bye-bye because you made an idol? You don't worship the God of our fathers? You need to leave. This is what he needed to do. We saw a king that told his mother, Get out of here. And how he did right. We're going to see a king is going to tell his mama, Yes, dear, I'll do anything you want me to do, mama. Even if it's going to bring me to hell. Even if it's going to make God angry with me. I'll do what you say. So God's given us, just in this, just a few chapters, two illustrations of the good and the bad. Isn't God a wonderful God? And he walked also after the council and went with Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazel, king of Syria, and at Ramah Gilead. And the Syrians smote Joram. Alright, so here's another battle. Here's a war time. Fights, battles, problems in your life may be one of many things. We talked about this last night. One of the things you may have unrest and have battles and have troubles in your life is because you may not be walking with God. God says in, in the book of Ezekiel, there is no peace to the wicked, saith the Lord. So, he's walking with Israel again. He's doing what Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat set a poor example. And he was a right king. He was one that loved the Lord and wanted to do right and did right. But he kept running to the wrong people. And look what's happening. We're in the two or three generations. And the family is still going to the wrong people. We even had a relationship We well, was the last night the night before where the king marries a, into Ahab's family. And now it's still showing up. He returned to be healed in the Jezero because of the wounds which, he, which were given him at Ramah. Right, so he was wounded. Jerome was, uh, uh, yeah, Jerome was wounded. He goes to Jezero, whatever, why he goes there, but he's going there to heal up. When he fought with Hazel, king of Syria. And Azariah, the son of Joram, king of Judah, went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, at Jezreel, because he was sick. Again, he said, why did he go down? Isn't Judah down south? Remember, he's up high. He's in a mountain, Jerusalem. That's what it means, coming down. He's sick. He's not doing right by the Lord. He goes visit him.
And the destruction of Ezhi was of God by coming to Joram. When he was come, he went out with Joram against Jehu, the son of Nimshai, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. I'll go visit him. He's sick. He's not walking with God, and God gives him more troubles and problems. He's not where he's supposed to be. Sometimes good intentions are not biblical. They're not sound. They'll cause you more troubles. I'm sorry, I'll go with the Bible. I'm going to stick with the Bible. There's some things that God does not want you to do. You separatists, divisionists, and not many of your, your churches today like that. I mean, these are the ones that God is love. And then when you sit on the, on, the, on the street passing out gospel tracts and holding a sign for Jesus, eh, you shouldn't be doing that. You're fending the kids. Ridiculous thing that Tracy got a couple of weeks ago. You should be standing up. What? 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 What is that? What? We made them mad because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They make fun of you because you're doing right. You make them look bad. Now here's a king. I mean, they just keep going the wrong spot, and God said God doesn't want them there, and more trouble rises. You want to have to stay out of trouble? You want to have you know God happy with you? You want to have peace in your life? You do what God tells you to do, and you don't do what God tells you not to do. Yeah, but the Bible says, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Yeah, and you can have peace. Read the lives of John Bunyan and, and uh, Fox's Book of Mars. How they had peace and sang songs while they were being burned on the faggots. You do know what faggots are, don't you? You better know what faggots are. It's in your Christian history. I'll tell you what a faggot is so you don't go call the cops and the government on me to have me arrested. A faggot was a stick used to light people on fire. Okay, you got that? Morons. Don't know what basic words are in the dictionary. You get all upset because we use words like that. When you do right, God is obligated to give you peace. He said, where do you find that? What are the fruits of the Spirit? And when you don't prof profess those fruits in your life, where are you walking wrong? Where are you going wrong from God? Because God don't do no wrong. And the destruction of Ezekiah was of God by coming to Joram. For when he was come, he went out with Joram against Jehu, the son of Nimshai, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. Now Ahab's finally going to his family, all the destruction he's done with Jezebel and everything is coming to an end. And it came to pass that when Jehu was executing judgment upon the house of Ahab and found the princes of Judah and the sons of the brethren of Azariah that ministered to Azariah, he slew them. And he saw Azariah and they caught him for he was hid in Samaria. And brought him to Jehu, and when they had slain him, they buried him, because they, because said they, he is a son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So the house of Azahiah had no power to keep still the kingdom. You say, what is all that mess? Be in the wrong place and the wrong where you're not supposed to be, fellowshipping with the wrong people. If there's anybody you shouldn't have fellowship with, it shouldn't have been with Ahab. There's even stories you should have not had no fellowship with uh, Jezebel, and you should not have married their child. And bury him in a place because the only fact is because of Jehoshaphat. But when Athaliah, the mother of Athaliah, saw that her son was dead, the only son, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. 
Now, her son is killed by uh, Jehu, who God established to do what he did. She, in turn, destroys all the seed of the royal family of Judah to destroy the devil to get no Jesus Christ. She was of the daughter of Omri. Satan is using her like he used Job's wife. He's using Athaliah to try to destroy Jesus Christ. Her aim is to destroy anybody that would be king in Judah. If she had destroyed, there would be no Jesus Christ. But thank God for verse 11. Verse 11 is the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. The protection, the prophecy, the sure 100% preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ that he would come of the tribe of Judah. No matter what Satan tried. No matter how much Satan tried. And you know what Satan will try to do? He'll go out and try to destroy your family. If Satan can destroy a Christian, if Satan can destroy a Christian family, he will be all happy, he will be all proud, and he would not need to worry about them no more. You say, why do you say that? It's verse 11. But Jehoshaphat, Neith, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Azariah, and stole him away from among the king's sons that were slain. So there's one boy that was not slain, that was protected like Moses. When the government is out to kill all the babies in Egypt, when the government is out to kill all the babies in Bethlehem, one child, Moses, one child, Jesus, one child, Joash, is protected type of Jesus Christ you now know that Joash is a type of Jesus Christ and you can see that type in Moses definitely but look what happened look what the devil did he the devil destroyed his brothers the devil destroyed his family as far as you can tell the only thing that Joash had was his sister Jehoshaphat Stole him away among the king's sons that were slain, and put him and his nurse in the in a bedchamber. So Jehoshabeth or Beth, the daughter of King Jerom, the wife of Jehoiada the priest, for she was the sister of Azariah. And if you run those, sit down with a piece of paper and a in a flow chart and a family chart, you understand that a little bit better. Hid him from Athila so that she slew him not. He was protected. And Moses, I believe, was six months, something like that. He was with them, hid in the house of God. And they're getting that in a minute. Six years. And Athila reigned over the land. Now, how do you know Athila was not was of Satan and not God? They hid him in the house of the Lord six years, and she had no idea. Can you name another boy that grew up in the house of the Lord with, with wickedness going on around him? Samuel. And he even says in Samuel's time, in error the light of the Lord went out. The candlestick. You know what Samuel's a type of? He's a type of Jesus Christ. This boy right here is a type of Jesus Christ. He lived in the temple. He's living among the, the Levites, the priests. He's being brought up in what what they know and what they can show this boy. This boy has a sound foundation in God, being in God's place amongst all monk and Satanry that's going on in the land, just like Samuel. All the mess that was going on with Eli's boys and all that. Eli had no really no love for the Lord to do right. 
and here's Samuel, and the same thing is going on in Second Chronicles 22. All mayhem going on. And here's one little boy, six uh, six years being raised, and nothing but on how to do for the Lord.